this is the first time we are streaming this to our outside community, so I want to send a special welcome out to all of you who have joined us, family and friends. This is an opportunity for us to keep you informed as, as to what's happening here at Glen Meadow, especially during this time of the COVID-19 crisis. I will um, try to keep you up to date with as many things that are going on here um, as I've done um, and every, every time we have had this meeting. And at the end, you have an opportunity to ask questions. And this is the phone number that you can call. So I hope you will use that number because I love hearing from all of you. But I wanted to start with something different this time. Uh, it's, no, it's no secret that each time I meet you, um, I'm kind of the bearer of bad news. And uh, I thought about that this morning, and that's probably not such a good thing to always be the bearer of bad news, especially since there's so much good stuff going on around us. And I wanted to start with a theme here, which is silver linings. And when we think of silver linings, we think of times when we've been through life, and many of you have lived many years. Um, I certainly have lived many years, many of you longer than me. And life kind of uh, doesn't always go as expected, right? So the COVID-19 is a great example of life not going as expected. And just like we can remember certain things in our lives, like the assassination of JFK or the day the World Trade Center happened. I remember the day that COVID became a big deal and I had just returned from Costa Rica after a really nice, relaxing vacation. And like all of you, we were just plunged into this new normal, as we call it. But when we think of silver linings, I want to just share with you my own silver lining as a result of COVID-19. And I hope later on in the show, you'll call in with your own stories of silver linings and, and opportunities that you've had that you may not have had prior to COVID-19. In my case, I have always been a social being. I like people, I like being around people. And I realize not being able to be around people outside of work is um, something I treasure. I mean, I love my workmates and thank God I can be with them. Um, and I am able to work and be around people, but many people really aren't able to be around others. So one thing is appreciation of the social connections and the human um, desire to be connected to other people. It's a really basic human need. And I had a special opportunity. My daughter, who lives in New York City, was between uh, apartments and jobs. And she lived, like I said, she's living in New York City. And she decided right before this all kind of came to a head that she was going to come visit us, my husband and I, in Hamden. And she's still here. And I think it's been uh, three months or so. But the silver lining here is that she's my only daughter and I love her to death, but I've gotten to know her so much better, and I've appreciated who she's grown into as a woman. And I would have never had that opportunity if, if we didn't have this, this COVID-19 hit our, hit our lives. And I'm sure you have many stories like that, so hopefully later on you can share those stories. And along with the theme of positivity, we never want to put our head in the sand. I mean, we know that lots of things are happening around us, but at the same time, we need to really help each other maintain positivity. It's a very stressful time for everyone. And if we can be positive with each other and, and provide a smile and a friendly face and a friendly phone call, we're going to be so much better off. And I always talk to you also about all the kind letters that we've received and that the staff have received and the generous donations that we've received. And that really lights up our lives here at Glen Meadows. So thank you, thank you for that. So a couple of updates I'd like to provide um, to you. So first of all, um, yesterday I reported that we had our second case of COVID-19 in the building. And I also reported that that person is currently at the hospital not in the building. 
So to date, we've had two residents test positive and we've had one employee test positive, so three total. Today, um, I also mentioned in our last conversation that we had obtained tests, um, COVID-19 testing kits from the Department of Public Health. And we, yesterday we were able, thanks to all of our wonderful staff, our nursing staff and our leadership, we were able to test 60 individuals. So we tested all the assisted living residents as well as um, all of the staff who work in assisted living. And you may ask, why assisted living? Well, first of all, we are regulated. Assisted living is a regulata regulated by the state of Massachusetts. And um, we were able to get these kits free because we're under their, the Department of Health's um, licensure. So we wanted to start with that testing. Those went out today, and they take between 48 and 72 hours to get response the, the results back. So we expect to get the results back um, probably from Friday on, perhaps on the weekend or latest early next week. And based on those results, we'll be able to make some, some really informed decisions about what to do next. We do have access to other tests that are not supplied by the Department of Public Health. We have not received them yet, but we, have, we are working with a lab down in North Carolina and um, we have ordered tests from them. They are not in the house yet, but once we have those tests, we will also, will be deciding what we want to do with them. I know a lot of people say, well, why don't you just test everyone, which I would love to do, but we also have to be a little bit conservative because we don't know if we have unlimited access to these tests. And that's been a challenge from day one for us. So the good news is though, we were able to test the assisted living residents and staff, and we have access to more tests. So I'll be giving you updates on that as we move along. Yesterday, there were a couple of questions. One of those questions had to do with taking uh, temperatures. I think it was Shirley, uh, you asked, you said your friends in other communities they're, that they're getting their temperatures taken every day um, and several times a day. So I did check with the Department of Public Health, our epidemiologist, and she said that is a good practice. We are already doing that in assisted living, and as you know, our structure here is we have, we have a pretty strong staff in assisted living, we have nurses in assisted living. We don't have that level of staffing in the independent living, but what we're suggesting is that if you do have help in your apartment, if you have a, an aid or private aid, that you have that aid help you take your temperature every day. Or, of course, you could take your own temperature, assuming you have a thermometer. Thermometers are a little challenging to come by these days, but um, I think they're becoming more and more available. So at this point, we're gonna suggest that you, you take your own temperature or you ask one of the aides to take your temperature if you have an aid. And if you have any questions about that, you can contact me after. And um, if you are a care share um, client or you are, are receiving aid services through Glen Meadow at Home, we'll just add that to your care plan as part of your care plan. The, and so, Shirley, thank you for the question because it helped inform us and gain some knowledge. There are some other questions. One had to do with outgoing mail since we initiated this new policy yesterday where we want everyone to shelter in place. It was a difficult decision and lots of questions came out of that. One of the questions was, okay, well, I can't go get my mail. What if I want to mail something? So what, we're, what we have worked out is that on the little shelf outside of your apartment, you can place any outgoing mail, just put a little note on it that that's outgoing mail and we'll make sure that's picked up. I don't know if we said during what time, but um, we'll get back to you on the exact time, but it will probably be when um, we're, we're delivering the mail, we pick up the outgoing mail. Uh, of course, we have to worry about our dogs and our pets. Um, people have asked about dog walking, so we're, we're, we have a process. Um, the team's working together. We will make sure your dogs are walked, and we'll be contacting you directly if you have a dog, and we'll make sure that your dog is well taken care of and gets walked 
um, as they need to be. Another question was the library. We know how many of you love to read, and we encourage you to continue to read. It's a really good hobby. It's a great thing to do while you're um, in your apartment with not a lot to do. So Laura and our Life Enrichment staff is going to be putting together a library card that they'll be taking around to you, and then you can select from the selection there. And certainly, I'm sure you can always put in an order if you have a specific book that you'd like to get, at least if it's available in our library, because the public library in Long Meadow author. is yeah, not they, open. If they like an author. So. Yeah, so if you have a particular author, if you like it's a certain type of book, um, someone told me they like suspense, but also with a little history attached. So we have quite a, a good selection of books, and we'll make those available to you. Um, the other thing, another question had to do with laundry, because we did say we want to, a common theme here, and the reason we're, we're doing all of the things that we're doing is because we want to limit exposure. The, the less exposure you have to the outside or to any of us or to each other, the less your chances of getting the COVID virus. So in addition to all of the hand washing, the wearing of the masks, all of that, the social distancing, um, this new um, sheltering in place is really for your protection. And it's not gonna go on forever, I promise. I know it's only day two and people are probably jumping out of their skins. I know um, I would probably be doing that. But I wanna thank you because you've been really respectful, all of you, all of the residents have been so respectful and the families uh, about our request to do this and, and have been really understanding of why we need to do it. So thank you for that. But it won't go on forever, okay? That's a promise. But we need a couple of days, we need to get these tests back to see kind of where we are at as a baseline and then we can make some informed decisions going forward. The laundry came up. Uh, one person said she can't lug her laundry around. As I said yesterday, if you have a special request with housekeeping, if you need something special, just give the concierge a call and we'll make that happen for you. Let's see, what else came up um, that people asked about? Uh, Laura just reminded me since we're we're putting so many things on the little shelf outside of your apartment. We'd like you to take any knickknacks off. Uh, many of you have really beautiful little things that you have on those shelves and you have your little personal items that personalize your apartment. But if you could remove those for now so that we can um, place items there, including the mail and any food items, et cetera, that would be a great help to us. Uh, lots of questions about doctor's appointments. And as I said yesterday, we need to pretty much take that up as a case-by-case -case situation. I do encourage you to cancel any doctor's appointments that are not urgent, but just for full transparency, some people are going on doctor's appointments um, and it's after they've talked with me and the staff and we've determined that it's a necessary appointment and it cannot be done through telehealth or um, it's a special procedure that has to be done. So if you, if you have a question about doctor's appointments, just give us a call. Um, we cannot guarantee transportation, but we'll, we'll do our best if we can to provide transportation, but we certainly cannot guarantee that we can provide transportation. We had a really good recommendation from one of our family members today. She, she said she loves all the updates, and I just wanna remind you, just go to our website and you can click on to all of the updates. Uh, you can see all of the, the conversations with Ann that we've had, some different interviews with residents and staff. You will also see the written summary of, of this conversation. That is also there on the website. But this family member had a great idea. She said, could you just kind of put some FAQs up there? So the frequently asked questions. And, um, we think that's a great idea. It also will help summarize because we kind of have the rhythm now of what we think people need to know and what people are asking. 
So we will be posting those frequently asked questions up on the website within the next couple of days. We are working on that as we speak. I also wanted to mention, you know, there's so many ways to communicate and I think, you know, Glen Meadow is really very um, cognizant of the fact that we need to be communicating with you all the time and using many different ways to do that. Hence, this conversation, through our written communications, um, through our other programs that we're doing with you. But please never hesitate to call. Um, our management team, our entire staff here is available to you. So if you have a question, and I'm speaking to family members as well here, if you have a question and you think it maybe is a dumb question, it probably isn't because it's a question that you have and maybe we haven't even thought about it. This is an ongoing process where things are changing every day. And like I said, just one recommendation from one family member today um, is helping us improve. So number one, we need your suggestions. You're all really smart people. And any ideas that you can bring to us to help us improve not just our communication, but our service to you, we're very open to hearing that. But also, please don't be afraid to pick up the phone to call me or any of the, of the team. The, the information is readily available on the website as well if you don't know who to call. But we're here to serve you and we will get back to you, I promise, within 24 hours, um, if not sooner. That is our policy here. So um, I also wanted to end on another positive note um, as we know, things kind of have come to a standstill, not just in the world, but here at Glen Meadow as well. And we had a lot of really cool projects percolating, and one was our uh, master plan and a building project, as well as some renovations that we want to do in the common areas. So we are moving forward with the renovations. Um, we are having, we are going to be putting a small group of people together that will be able to meet uh, through a video chat with the architects so that we can get this process rolling and we can start doing something other than thinking about the COVID but thinking more about how we can make Glen Meadow more beautiful and bring our minds together in a way that's of course social distancing appropriate but um, I was I, I excited to share that with you because we want to keep moving forward and and when this is all said and done, we're gonna be a step ahead of things um, when it comes to the renovation. So that's, um, that's some good news that I wanted to share with you. So I'm looking at the staff to see if there's anything that I didn't cover, um, anything. I'm, I'm, this is a weekly conversation. It's every Wednesday at 2 p.m., so please tune in. Um, and like I said, it is now open to the public, so we, we welcome the public. Um, we're expecting to be number one on the list of top watch shows in Western Massachusetts uh, very soon, or maybe we might make the Long Meadow list, I don't know. But it could be a competition. Um, so anyway, we look forward to your phone calls, we look forward to your, your comments, your emails, your cards, and your, your blessings and your prayers. Thank you very much. At this point, I just would like to open it up to phone calls. The number is right here, 355-5910. If you have a question, a comment, a suggestion. Good. Hi, Joan. Hi, Ann. Is it all right to go out and sit on your porch? Good question. Is it all right? So the question from Joan was, is it all right to sit on your porch? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Okay. You can sit on your porch. Okay. Okay, and we encourage and, that. And if anybody walks by, you can say hi. <laughs> <laughs> That's up to you. You know, it's funny, I was in the grocery store, uh, I don't go very often, but I was in the grocery store, and I found myself not even wanting to look at people. It's just a weird thing, right? Like we're not saying hi, we're not making eye contact, we're wearing masks. So yes, wave, say hello, um, okay. have a conversation as long as okay. you're far apart. Because I'm on high, I can't, I'm not, <laughs> not yeah. anybody. But please do that, yes, okay. please, Joe. Thank you. 
Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Ann. Uh, I have a few questions. Okay. Uh, that I hope will help. Uh, sure. The lack of uh, weekly cleaning, I can understand that. Mm -hmm. But the hygiene, is there any way that people's bathrooms and, say, kitchen sink area be cleaned quickly? Mm -hmm. And, uh, okay. you know, Okay. Uh, I, I think that's very important when we're talking to hygiene. All right. I have John Blair sitting here taking that note down. Uh, we'll, we'll look at that. Uh, I, I think I'll get back right. to you. So did everyone hear the question? I'll, I'll repeat it. It wasn't a question. It was a, a, a request, actually, that while we suspended the housekeeping, could we could we arrange to do some cleaning of the kitchen and the bathrooms? And um, I'll get back to you on that. Um, I have a lot of food allergies and uh, just food intolerances. Mm -hmm. And the cafe has been very wonderful over the last three years of making sure that grill is cleaned and everything before I eat. Um, and they've been very careful. So I have to deal with this uh, when coming in. What I'm concerned about, not only for myself, but other people, that food is left in the hallway. And, um, I know, uh, and uh, now we're also asked to leave our trash in the hallway. Um, the, I have a uh, folding table, you know, the little uh, copy, t uh, copy things that you have uh, mm -hmm. when somebody comes, mm -hmm. and I found that that's very helpful. I can slip that under the uh, mm -hmm. shelf and okay. pull it out. Okay, Sandy, I just want to, so I can make catch everyone up with what you're saying. Um, Sandy's bringing up the fact that now that we're delivering a lot of things and leaving things outside of the apartment, it would be great if you have a small table to put outside your apartment, like a folding table. That would be really good because then it would give a little extra space. Um, we don't have tables like that to give to everyone, but if you have some um, and you'd like to use those, that's a really good option. So thank you, Sandy. It's uh, called a, uh, what, a TV table? A TV table, right. Yeah. Um, so that's a great um, suggestion. Anything um, else, Sandy? Uh, the other, uh, I guess I've got to combine uh, the answers. Uh, that, uh, what, the other thing I've done is if I've had to put a, a trash in a bag, mm -hmm. uh, I put a... Um, tray under it so that there's any leakage we're not going to spoil the, the rug okay okay another good suggestion sandy's recommending that if you put your garbage out you put something underneath it so we don't spoil the rug thank you sandy great idea okay i think i have is there anything else uh, I can't read my own writing. Well, you know where to find me. Oh, I'm the right? other thing is, uh, yes. the last thing is, yes. if you take a plastic bag of rubbish, uh -huh. can you leave a plastic bag for rubbish? Okay, um, I'm getting a, uh, no? Typically, we don't supply trash bags to the independent side okay. or the, the assisted side. Okay. Because we can't get out to buy trash bags. You well, get we, them through the resident store. Contact Megan. Yeah, we. if you contact Megan Reynolds, we'll get you trash bags. Those are, we'll, those are available. We'll get them for you. Okay? And build them. And what? And build them. It's through the store. Right, John? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're not free. Okay, so if you need um, trash bags, that's something you can order through Megan Reynolds. Okay? 
Alrighty, uh... Alright, I'm gonna let someone else... You. Okay, Sandy, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, have a great afternoon. Hi, Doris. I'm talking to you, Doris. Okay, I'm sorry. That's okay. What can I do for you? I've been trying to... Uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, well, I've been trying to, to make some calls and, and at times I've used this phone here and I don't get through. Um, well, you're through now. I can hear you loud and clear. Okay. You know, the answer to the question, that too, that's the other one. So um, you have someone with you who can help you, right? Yes. Okay. What can I do for you? What's okay, the... Okay, come on. Oh. Yes? Yeah, the food. I'm ready. Hi, Doris. Hi, Doris. It's okay. What's your name? Again? Patricia. Hi, Patricia. Okay, it's okay. She's okay. Did Doris have a question that she'd like to ask? Yes, I do have a question. Okay. Why is, what is your first? I just, if, if I answer a question and a trivia question, I know I never get it because it doesn't go through your, your line. It could be that this is why people call me. I think what happens is if there, this is such an exciting show and there's so many people who want to call in that you may be calling while I'm still on the phone with someone else. Trivia. She's talking about she can't get through for trivia. The trivia game, yeah. Oh, and that's also, trivia is a separate program. So we can, we can follow up with you, Doris, and we'll, we'll also explain it to Patricia. Okay? Okay, so I have Laura here. She's going to follow up with you. Okay? Okay. All right, Doris. Nice to hear from you. <laughs> Hi, Jay. Hi, Ann. How are you? Great. How are you doing? Uh, okay. Uh, and I question uh, the wis wisdom of the policy of keeping secret the name of residents who contacted the virus. It's not logical because you know, we need to know if we had had contact with the person. And you need to be able to trace those contacts. Right. So I mean, even before the virus, the names of residents going to and from the hospital were posted. Okay. So why now the, the secret? We, so the question has to do with um, telling, telling residents who are the people who've been exposed. So first of all, the two people that were exposed here are no longer here, number one, okay? Number two, we cannot reveal the name of the person. That is um, against confidentiality and uh, it's health information that cannot be shared. So I cannot reveal people's names. What I can tell you is that we have a very um, tight process whereby we're working, we can figure out the staff who've been in the apartment and if there's been any contact with residents. And we're working, the Department of Health works with us on that right now they are telling us we don't need to do any contact tracing, as they call it, with the two cases that we've had, because their contact with the outside has been very limited. The staff had had contact with them, and in the first case, as I shared with you, uh, we, we quarantined quite a few of our maintenance staff because they had had exposed contact, it, it, you know, some exposure. So they were all, um, they quarantined for 14 days. So we have a tight process. We really do. But you know, I, I understand the, the uh, situation with 
where the staff, mm -hmm. uh, because you can identify which staff is with what person. Mm -hmm. But we have had, 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 may have had contact with that person. And if we? And we would have no way of knowing uh, that that the contact was made, nor, nor would you. Right. So what I can assure you is if we have any sense that there may have been contact <coughs> with you, you will be informed. But the, well, la the last two cases, well, we, the last two cases that we had, as I said, had very limited contact. And the Department of Health, I just talked to Beverly Hirshhorn yesterday, and I asked her that question specifically, if we needed to do any contact tracing in this newest case. And I described the situation to her, and she said no. So, okay. okay. All right, well, uh, thank you. Uh, okay, thank you, Jay. Hi, I'm not sure who this is. Can you say who you are? Hi, my name is Doreen. Is this Glenn Meadow? Hi, Doreen. Yes, it's Ann Thomas at Glenn Meadow. Oh, I'm watching you on TV and you're still talking to the person before this. <laughs> I'm talking to you now, Doreen. Okay, I have a question. Yes. If um, someone has COVID and then goes to the hospital and mm -hmm. recovers, mm -hmm. are they able to come back? So the question is, if someone has COVID, goes to the hospital and recovers, are they able to come back? And the answer is yes. This is their home. We will take all the precautions we need to take. We, Again, we've been very conservative here, and there have been people who've gone out to the hospital for other reasons, uh, not related to COVID. Even in those situations, even though they tested negative upon uh, leaving the hospital, we are quarantining those people for 14 days. So we can monitor them for symptoms, signs and symptoms, because they have been in a hospital and as we know hospitals carry a lot of germs so certainly yes people are welcome back as long as we can care for them um, as long as they don't have a skilled need that goes beyond what we can do okay. all right thanks for calling dory hi carol hi how are you fine this goes back to uh, the outside, and I don't know if you know, but I've spent a lot of time sitting outside the last few weeks. And I, I sure do know that. on my patio. However, the floor is a mess, needs to be washed, as they do every year, and the furniture unpacked. Okay. Can that be done? Absolutely. So I can sit out? Absolutely. So the, the, the comment was, um, that Carol wants to sit on her porch, but needs some help up there with maintenance. So we'll we'll take care of that. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Are there any other questions, comments? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Carol. Hi. Hi. Um, I have two questions. First, with the trash, you said to put our trash out. We will be in a plastic bag. What about the recycling, paper goods, and uh, the uh, tin things? Now, mm -hmm. I called the desk, and they told me to put it out loose. And I don't want to do that. Can I put it out in an open plastic bag? Yes. So the question had to do with separating the regular trash from the recycling, it's a great question, Carol. Yes, you can still put the two separate, your, your, your regular trash and your recycling, two separate containers, or two, two separate bags. Okay. Thank you. Carol. <laughs> no. 
So first of all, the quick, I really get how it's so difficult, especially if you don't have a porch and the weather is so nice. Um, and I know how much you love being outside. Like I continue to say, this isn't going to last forever. I think early next week, we will be able to make some informed decisions. Um, and we just have to continue to reevaluate. If it goes on longer than we hope, then we will have to figure out other ways to get you outside. Your windows do open. So you can always open a window. Um, but yes, we really do understand the importance of getting fresh air and being outside. And it's, that's why it's so difficult to do this. Um, I wouldn't expect to walk around the ground, but I do yeah. need to go out on the patio out there and I'm all by myself. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully the shelter in place is really going to make a difference. And and by doing that, we'll soon be able to to open up the community, um, at least to get you out of your apartments. Right. So our intention clearly is to get you out of the shelter in place as soon as possible. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Carol. Thank okay. you. And thank you for your patience. Any other phone calls? Any other? <laughs> Hi, Jim. Hi, Ann. Uh, with meals being delivered to the apartments, mm -hmm. we end up with a lot of recyclables each day, you know, especially the aluminum pans and all that. Mm -hmm. So have you considered specifying separate pickup times for recyclables and trash? For example, have the recyclables picked up between 8 and 9 and, and the regular trash between 1 and 2? That's not a bad suggestion. Um, so the suggestion was have we considered picking up recyclables at a different time than we pick up the trash? So um, I will get back to you on that. Thank you. That's a thank you for the suggestion. Hi. Hi. This is Tan Tanya Snell. Hi, Tanya. How are you today? Hi. Yeah, fine. I have two questions. Number one, a few a few nights ago. We had the fire alarm went off at 12.15 mm -hmm. and was on until quarter of one on one side of the building. I understand the other side just got a slight beep. I figured that you would tell us what happened and what we should have done. Some of us went to the meeting place we're supposed to go to. Not all these seven of us did. So, that's a great uh, question. Do, do. So Tanya's question uh, first is about the fire alarm and what to do when that happens. So first of all, yes, there was a fire alarm that occurred 12-15 um, on Sunday. I guess it was Monday morning. Um, and it operated, the alarm operated as it should. There was an overflow a leak in a pipe, and so the alarm did go off. And we can't turn the alarm off until the fire department tells us it's okay. So we recognize that it's very loud, but it's loud for a reason. Um, and you know, we'd love to be able to silence it, but we cannot silence it until the fire department arrives and approves that allows us to turn it off. Secondly, during this time, um, while we're sheltering in place, we are recommending that if the alarm does go off, you just stay in your apartment. Um, if there is anything, if there is an emergency, the fire department will be here and they will be directing us on what to do. So at this point in time, with the with the shelter in place, you can remain in your apartment if the alarm goes off. Is that clear? Does that answer your question? 
Yes, yes. I just wondered what we were supposed to do. No, it's a good question. In this case. It is a good question. Thank you for that. Okay, my second question is, uh, since we're also aware of ambulances coming now, mm -hmm. one came at quarter of five last night. I thought that you might tell us today that the person who went it had nothing to do with the, uh, the virus or not to worry about it. Are there? It came by the swimming pool. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. And it, uh, and from my distance, it looked as though they brought somebody out. Well, I have to look into that. I'm not clear exactly who what that situation was. But so the question was when the when the ambulance comes. So number one, I recognize that people get very concerned when they see an ambulance. Okay because it means several things. It means it's possible, first of all, it means that someone isn't feeling so good. That's the first thing, and you worry about that. And secondly, you worry, okay, is this a COVID situation? So as I've always said, when we have a COVID case, we will let you know. So there's nothing new to report. She's too close to her. And okay. if you go, so there's no news to report. I don't, uh, honestly, I mean, we've had a couple people go out. Um, it may have been someone coming back who actually was out at the hospital for something else, totally unrelated. Okay, just so you okay. know. Okay. But there have been no no new cases since I reported yesterday. The one new case, which is now two cases, and that's it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome, Tanya. Fine. Have a good Sorry. afternoon. Hi, Ron. Hi, Ann. Uh, two, two quickies. Uh, mm -hmm. One is the uh, first, the outgoing mail, which you discussed before. Mm -hmm. uh, not every apartment has a shelf outside. I'm one of, there's probably a half dozen apartments without a shelf. Oh. Uh, with, uh, a couple times uh, when Rick delivers a mail, you know, he'll take my outgoing mail, but, uh, Sometimes I'm indisposed or something, and phone mm -hmm. don't answer or knock. He shows the incoming mail underneath the door, but I don't have a shelf, and uh, I don't know if that's going to become that's a problem a or not. Down good, the good point. So, Ron, uh, it's also something I learned something new that not every apartment does yeah, have a shelf. They call the elbow apartments. The know? elbow apartments. Yeah. So we will get you a container, some type of container to put mail in etc so that it doesn't have to be slid under the door yeah. how is that will that work for you ron yeah, that's fine. and we can I do that a, we can do that for problem. all of the people that don't have shelves and a second question which uh, is sure. a little more important uh, has to do with the testing and your uh, there are two kinds of tests one's testing for the virus and the other one's testing for antibodies mm -hmm. i assume you're testing for the virus that the antibodies are not quite ready right. for prime time. But the uh, problem with the, uh, anybody that has symptoms should get the, uh, the test. Yes. But yeah. the test is, the test is nothing more than a snapshot. If you start, let's say you're testing everybody in assisted living, uh, somebody could test uh, no virus, and then the next day they get the virus. All you're looking at is one day. So unless you have an infinite amount of test kits, uh, you can yes. test everybody every day. You, I know you don't have that. So what I, I think what you ought to be doing with limited supply of test kits is just test people with symptoms. So Otherwise, you're wasting, you're wasting the kits. Ron uh, has a very valid, very important point. So he, he mentioned, first of all, there are two types of tests. There's tests for the virus as well yeah, as tests for the virus. And, and tests for the antibodies. Test. The so, antibodies is a test, a blood test, which uh, right. tells you whether you're uh, got a meter here or not. That's coming down the road. It's right. In limited supply up here. That's the one that's maybe become more important. Right so, now, the important thing is to test people with symptoms. Right. It's questioning whether you're wasting some of the kits. Have you waste kits? Then somebody has symptoms and you're out of kits. So, 
Ron's bringing up a great point. So number one, we are testing for the virus. We don't have the antibody test. Um, that's not available to us, even if we did want it. Um, but you bring up a really good point about tests. And you're right, we can test you today and you can come back negative and then tomorrow you could come down with symptoms. Um, so that is, right, and that is why since we do have a limited supply of tests, we are just, we're kind of taking this um, step by step because we did have, you know, we were advised by um, the Department of Health to do the testing in assisted living. Um, and they also supplied those to us for free. So, but I really understand, because there's a lot of controversy about testing or not testing, and I get a lot of phone calls of why aren't you testing everyone? Well, that's exactly why we're not, because, right. So we want to hold on to the tests that we have to test the ones that we will be getting later, earlier next week, we want to hold on to those so we can test the people who are symptomatic. Right, that's the important. And that's that is very important. Okay. But thank you for bringing that up. Thank you, Ron. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Are there any more questions? A very busy group. You've been thinking a lot today. Maybe they have them turned down their TV if they call it. I see more. Yeah, see. Hi. Uh, to, first, to answer Ron's question, um, um, Megan is a, able to get you for a very reasonable price a whole bag of those trash bags that he could just leave outside his door. Okay. So, right. Um, but yes. She, can get the, she got me a roll this morning. Um, mm -hmm. And also, uh, since I've moved in, I've always had a plant out on my little stand outside, and I took it in this morning to make it easier for the uh, people leaving stuff there. And uh, mm -hmm. and I have now uh, I have this whole roll of trash bags, so I can just use those. Thank you, Seymour. So yes, just to reiterate, trash bags are available. We can get them for you. Just call yeah. Megan and do clear your yeah, shelves. She, she, got, yeah, she, gets she was able for you the same day. Great. And Thank you. Also, I, until you came, I just want to let you know that until you came on, mm -hmm. I was sitting out on my porch with a heavy long pants and a heavy sweatshirt, and it is chilly. Ah, so Seymour was sitting out on his porch. Well, you came in for me? Wow, that's yes. special. Thank okay. you, Seymour. Now go back out on your porch. Yeah. Have a good afternoon. Okay, well, that was a long conversation. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh. Hi, Ruth. Hi, Ann. This is in reference to the fire alarm. Yes. When the fire alarm goes off, does it go off in the entire building or just in sections? So the question is, does a fire alarm go off? If it goes off, does it go off through the entire building? The answer is... It should be the entire building. It goes through the entire building. Well, the other night, when the alarm went off, I was up, it was 12, 15, all I got was a little tweet, like a, a bird tweet. Okay. And then a, an hour later, I got another little tweet. I didn't know there was a fire engine here. They had, okay. didn't know that there was a fire alarm going on. Okay, so we will definitely look into that. There was, uh, Ruth is saying she didn't get a loud fire alarm in her section of the building. And again, you don't have to wait for this call. to. If that, that's something important. So feel free to call us right well, after that. Well, was talking about it, it brought, uh, brought to mind yeah. I wondered about that. Okay, but we'll take a look at that. Okay, thank uh, you. Ruth, thank you. Have a good afternoon. Thank you, you too. All right, so I'm going to sign off. I want to thank all of you for joining me in this fun conversation um, and I look forward to 
talking with you again next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Thank you and have a wonderful afternoon. <laughs> <laughs>